cherish viewers and those who may be listening to our podcast series. Welcome to the Perisos Horizon chat room. Your host, Distinguished Toastmaster Patricia Jifamen Salakai, noted in her book entitled Fearless, Fabulous, and Flamboyant The Importance of Recognizing and Celebrating Our Different Milestones Attained in Our Quest to Realize Our Dreams in Life. The journey into becoming the best version of yourself comes with struggles, challenges, and sometimes the feeling of giving up is so strong. Perisos Horizon is here to encourage and support you to never give up. You have it in you to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all you could ever dream of or imagine. Stay connected right here. Let's listen to the experiences of others, learn lessons from them, be inspired to do more, and together, let's keep scaling higher heights. Hello, cherished viewers and our listeners. Welcome once again to the Paris Horizon chat room series. This, as you know, is the second season, and we are honored to be having amazing guests coming into the studio to share their stories with us. We have a very young lady, but with so much power in terms of the impact that she is making in her community and beyond. Today, we are going to be discussing community impact, and I have the honor to have joined me in the studio, Madame Ohinawa Constance Ankoma. Before I let her in, I just want you to know a little bit about who she is. She is a teacher by profession and currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in education, mathematics to be precise, at the University of Cape Coast right here in Ghana. She, by her experiences, has birthed two different organizations, a foundation that is not not for profit and also one that generates some income to sustain her nonprofit organization. Since we are going to be discussing a lot more about the impact that she's making in communities in and around where she grew up, let's welcome Miss Ohinawa Constance Ankuma to join us. Yay! <laughs> Finally, I have the honor to pull you into our studio. And I know you have been doing so many amazing things and that has really kept you busy. But today, I am glad that you're finally here in our studio. It is a delight to have you with us. All right, it's my pleasure, DTM. I'm honored to be on your platform. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I want us to give our audience some more information about who this young lady is. Who is Ohinewa Constance Ankuma? Who do those around you say you are? You know that powerful question, who do people say I am? So who do people say Ohinewa Constance Ankuma is? Please tell us more about yourself. Thank you very much once again. And let me use this opportunity to say hello to your audience. Ohinawa Constance and Kuma, what people say I am. I always say that becomes my brand, what people say I am. So Ohinawa is an enthusiastic young woman, a teacher by profession, and also passionate about community development specifically women and girls development. I grew up in Asante Achim Krofa, and I am in a family of 
sucks. And currently, I'm working at a class a in the Asante Achim North District as well. So basically, that is about Hinewa. And let me also share my hobbies. I love to volunteer, especially when it comes to positive projects, like projects that would cause change in a positive direction. I am around to help, so I volunteer a lot. And I also love to read. I love reading so much. I mean, that has been my childhood um, hobby. I grew up with loving to read. So that is basically about Ohinawa. If there is any other thing you would want your audience to know about me, I am available to tell them as well. That is lovely to know. And that is basically what a lot of social entrepreneurs do. They look out for problems in the communities and in the society and think about very innovative ways that they can help solve those problems and how they can, through solving those problems, generate a little bit of income so that they can reinvest into uh, creating more, uh, I'll say, solutions for people, leaving our world a much better place. So one would ask, as a young girl, a professional teacher, and you are currently also in school, what keeps you up at night? What is that burden that always keeps you thinking? Okay, this is a very deep question, I must say. And that would lead to the story about the birth of Erudite Women's Empowerment Foundation. So I grew up in a small community, I would say, not having so many privileges at your disposal. So at a very tender age, as a teenager, I, I had the feeling that I would want to make impact, but then I didn't have clarity and I didn't even understand what I was thinking of. So growing up with the help of my parents and my teachers, I could sail through to get to the tertiary level. That's after my secondary education. I have been very interested in leadership, student leadership to be specific. Um, growing up my primary, JHS, or secondary school, I didn't buy for any position. I just wanted to focus on my education, my academics, but for Tertiary, I attended um, Agogo Presbyterian College of Education, a women's college actually. So there I had the opportunity to become the SRC president. So after college, I felt like there is more to do, like I should do something extra. My leadership shouldn't end with the completion of college. So when I was posted to where I am now, my workplace, I am very observant. I observe very well. So when I came to my workplace, I observed a challenge. I would say a challenge about my school girls. That they wouldn't report on certain days to school. And let me say, some teachers would be hard on them, trying to punish them for not coming to school and all that. But I took interest in getting to know what was happening the reason behind that so getting closer to some of them please but we hope hello yes i can hear you you can go ahead all right so so, a slide closer to so we sort right. of lost you a little bit when it got to the challenge that you observed with one of your girls all right, so let me continue from there. So I got to identify a particular challenge with menstrual hygiene management. So I asked myself so many questions that what could I do? And that also prompted something I went through during my JHS days that I couldn't speak openly about my menstruation with my parents. I couldn't talk to anybody about my menstruation. So I was finding means of managing my menstruation. And some of the things I remember I did for managing my menstruation, I mean, they are weird to talk about. So I was like, this could be a challenge indeed, not only with my girls here, but maybe girls elsewhere too would be going through such a challenge. 
and also being interested in leadership i was like i don't see many women young women especially going into the leadership space they would always give excuses as to why they wouldn't be able to perform in such areas so i was like no there should be something to inspire or motivate some of these young women to show up for leadership positions and perform as well so i decided to come out with something but that's why i didn't know exactly what I, I wanted to do so i kept praying about it and then speaking to other people i trusted about what i was thinking then so people could help give me some advices as to what i should do so i started small like in my school i could organize a talk for them on wednesdays and then afterwards give them sanitary pass and all that so someone a very key person in my life told me that oh you know what i believe in you i know what you can do why don't you expand your activity so that you could get to reach more people with your project so i thought it was a very good idea and i decided to brainstorm on how i could make that possible so i reached out to few people few friends okay. of mine in my and we came out with the idea that we would have to get an organization and profit so that we could champion such a positive cause. So that led to the birth of Everyday Men's Empowerment Foundation. And I am damn passionate about it. And that keeps me awake at night. <laughs> Definitely. You exude that passion. And I believe that it was after one of such uh, workshops and that after a donation that you have made to one of the schools in the rural communities that I saw your post on Facebook and uh, I quickly started going through your profile and wondering who is this young lady? And uh, I think I sort of, I sort of missed following you a bit until again, okay. I saw you pop up on Leading uh, Ladies Network and uh, you Ooh. had um, um, one of my, my uh, you know, admirers when it comes to lady, uh, leading um, ladies and women in leadership, um, Yawa Hansen Kwao. And uh, I immediately connected uh, and sent that message. So you know how difficult it is for ladies, as you said, to talk about their menstrual cycles, let alone even disclose to you maybe some of the challenges they're having when it comes to the support and getting the the, the sanitary pass etc to guard themselves after you have given the young girls these sanitary pads what has been some of the feedback that you got from them did they now begin to open up to share their stories and through the skills training or the workshop training, are they in a way able to generate some income for themselves to sustain it? So here I want us to look at the sustainability of it. Is it that you donate to one school this year or this quarter and that is it? What happens the rest of the 11 months after you have been to a certain school? All right, so um, we started in 2017. So but what we do is that before we go to a particular school, we would try to do needs assessments when it comes to menstrual hygiene management. Some schools would need just education and some would need education plus products for managing their menstruation. So we do that and we try to find out before our intervention, how attendance was like for the girls so after the program we will do our evaluation we will monitor and evaluate to see how our intervention has been effective in that regard so it's from some of them that we've gathered the feedback we've gathered that's has actually informed some of the projects we are yet to implement right okay. so we've got to realize like you mentioned we believe in sustainability so not just educating them giving them a one-time package of sanitary items and then leaving them to themselves no there should be something to sustain this project so we 
thought of going in for the reusable sanitary pads so that we would give them, teach them how to make them as well, so that they would be independent in managing their menstruation. So that is what we're actually looking at now, trying to put together resources to go into helping them with that particular activity, yes. And also one thing that we do is that when we go to a, a particular school, we get in touch with one female teacher so that she would be a part of our platform where we get to issue resources to them to help the girls so that we wouldn't get to be going there always ourselves to do activities for them. So that is what we've been doing basically. That is quite an amazing uh, feat that you have taken up on yourself. And I must dock my hat off to you and your team. What I also want to find out is, have you been able to reach out to the manufacturing companies that are into the production of sanitary pads to try to get them to include you as um, in terms of your foundation as part of their corporate social responsibility to help support the sustainable aspect of your passion okay so before we organize activities we try to get into partnerships with like-minded organizations and also seek sponsorship from like-minded corporate institutions as well so we've worked with a number of sanitary pads companies like Faithex. Faithex has been with us for quite a number of years since we started. And they always give us the sanitary pads, then we would go to this group. Thank so you, Proper sanitary pad. They've also been on board to support. But we look forward to establishing contacts with more sanitary pads companies because you cannot always rely on one source of getting your, your products. I mean, sometimes they could be down in production and it would also affect their delivery to you. So you would have to seek various means, other means, so that you can keep your activities going. So we are planning a program this year on menstrual hygiene day. So we look forward to serving sponsorship letters to other sanitary pad companies and also building a lasting relationship with them, like you mentioned, so that they would include us in their corporate social responsibility plans so that they will get to donate to us and we would also reach the girls with them, yes. That is an amazing thing that you're doing. And you mentioned uh, data collection, your monitoring and evaluation uh, you know, aspects of the organization, and then even the needs assessment and all of that. Do you recall the very first school that, I mean, you, you donated to? And have any of the girls graduated from the school? And since then, have you had any of them volunteering to be part of your organization as a way of paying it forward? Forward, okay. So the first school we visited, I, I used my own school. We visited my school and some of the girls are done with the um, with JHS and they are in SHS now. So sometimes I get to speak with them, trying to find out how they are doing and how they are managing their menstruation and other hygienic aspects of their lives. So they get to speak to me, but I am now going to look into getting them on board. Because recently That's we cool. wanted to do um, a shoot where we, we would get some of our beneficiaries to speak about the impact we've had on them through our activities. So we are planning to have that session and also not just having the shoot for our publicity purposes, also getting them to speak to some of the young girls, serving as peer mentors to them and all that. So it's, it's a great thing to consider. Wow. That is indeed insightful. And a lot of the times uh, people underestimate how this actually affects the girl child and their um, desire to be in school at certain uh, periods of the month. And I'm so excited that you have taken this niche and you are hanging on to it and doing great things with it. I want you to again tell us, where do you see your organization five years from now? I know that you have created or you have initiated erudite posturing agency. 
which is more profit making to help sustain the foundation so how do you see yourself five years from now okay so are you thinking of um, either manufacturing these uh, reusable parts that you're talking about you don't know what what is erudite um thinking about you know as we look into okay, the future so all right, so looking into the future and what we would want to do in the next five years, like you mentioned, the first one has to do with the menstrual hygiene management sector because that has been our signature program with E-Wave. So we look forward to going into the production of the reusable sanitary parts so that we would be able to reach more girls and also get to raise money to support some of the girls who are really underprivileged, yes. And the most, the, the very thing that we would want to achieve, like in the next five years, would be having our leadership academy. We want to have a school where we would get to focus mainly on grooming young girls, young women into leadership, so that we would equip them with leadership skills and serve them to the market to help building our dear nation. So our grand vision has to do with getting our leadership academy. Yeah. So you, I mean, you're going to empower these young girls, not just are you uh, cutting down on some of the problems that can keep them away from school by providing the solution of ensuring they've got their menstrual hygiene management in good grabs and they're able to have the resources to use. But then you're going to empower them so that we have more women in leadership. Yes. In fact, before we wrap up our session, I know you have a specific code. You said you want to be remembered as an amazing contributor to the development of humanity. That you are the one that helped women and girls decipher their dreams and actually achieve them every dream begins with a dreamer and we all have it in us to be able to bring out and birth all the greatness within us and so i know that you are definitely doing that and instilling that same sort of dream into the young girls and what do you want to find out from the audience? In what ways can they support you? Aside just helping with the sanitary pass during the donations, how can the audience who are listening to you locate you and help you achieve this dream? All right, so first of all, we appeal to the public, especially our women who have been able to sail through to the top that they could reach out to our organization so that they can get the opportunity to pay it forward to our young girls we are seeking mentors to help us with some of our programs we have a mentorship program and um, a leadership development program too so we are reaching out to people to come and help us with that with a mentorship for the young girls and also for us, I always say that it's not about you donating money directly or sanitary pies. That's also helpful. But speaking to others about the good things Erudite is doing. It could be through you that someone would get to come on board and help some of these girls. So whenever you have the opportunity and the platform and is related to the ongoing conversation, get to speak out what Erudite is doing for these young girls and we would really appreciate that and also i can i hope i can share my our, our site where people can get more information about us can i do that yes so yes you can share that information and also share it later with me so that i can put it in the chat comments of the video so that those who replay can have access to it all right so we are very active on two social media platforms instagram and facebook so on instagram 
is simply erudite underscore women and on facebook is erudite women's empowerment foundation we also have a website www.eruditeweb.org where you can get access to every information about what we do at erudite Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It has been an honor having this conversation with you. Look forward to Erodite becoming global and receiving the kind of attention that you need. And happy to mentor and then help your girls. As you know, I'm also a communication and leadership coach and I love to empower young girls and to be the change that they want to see. Wow. What would be your final words to that young girl who may be out of school, but then they are relying on um, men and we hear about sometimes young girls being taken advantage of simply because they need some little money to be able to buy parts, etc. What would be your message to them? All right, so I will say that I had a dream as a young girl and the dream lived with me and now I am getting to manifest the dream. It wasn't easy, it wasn't all that smooth, even with where I come from. So I want to tell my core young women out there that everything that you've ever envisioned is possible it only demands that you stay focused and determined and you associate yourself with the right people who would help you to actualize your dreams and again if you have that pressing call that there is something to be done you have something within you that you need to bring it out don't say that in the meantime i don't have anything to start with i don't have resources i don't have funds i don't have the knowledge you would never get these things you have to start either ways you get to learn hands on you learn through the process so i have always said that start now and get perfect later that is what i've been doing and it has been really helpful so that is what i, I believe with my other young girls, that you start now and get perfect later. Wow. Thank you so much. You start now and get perfect later. Some will tell you, feel the fear, but do it anyway. Today, we have been talking about community impact with Miss Okinawa Constance Ankuma, a teacher by profession, currently pursuing her bachelor's degree at the University of Cape Coast, and she is in the STEM field because she is studying mathematics. And despite that, she also is the CEO of Erudite Ostrin Agency and the Erudite uh, Women Empowerment Foundation. I hope that you have listened to her message and why she is on this journey. The Paris Horizon chat room series, as you know, is here to share the inspiring and motivational stories that our guests are embarking on. You won't have everything that you require all at once. You would have to take that leap of faith and take that step of faith in order to bring about the realization of that dream. What is it that keeps you up at night? What is that passion that you need to transform into a profession to help the world become that better place. Social entrepreneurs like ourselves are always looking out for the impact. And most of the time, it takes a lot of investment of our time. So just tell us a little bit, how do you manage your time? As a teacher, I believe you've got notes and scores of homework to supervise for the kids. How do you manage your time in just one minute? so that it would encourage somebody Honestly, else. It's, 
is quite challenging. That has been one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. But what I do, the solution I, I have for this is that I do well to prioritize what I am to do at every point in time. I use my time efficiently. I try to manage myself so that I'll be able to do a lot more within a, a short period. It's not easy, but I also have a vibrant team that helps in implementing some of our activities and then planning also. So I get to delegate and I supervise to ensure that everything is being done in the right way. So my team has been helpful. I am so proud of them. And I also try to use my time efficiently. So that has been the solution for me. Thank you so much. And so we have heard from our guest, Ms. Ohinewa Constance Sankuma. For those of you who think that you can't do it, for those of you who think that you have so much on your plate and so you cannot do anything else in terms of enhancing your own um, skills and competencies or developing your own capacity to do more, take inspiration from this. Sometimes you need to create a team and then as you continue to recognize their efforts and their support, they will continue to help you do greater and bigger things. This is where we wrap up, but don't go off yet. Please remember, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching us on Facebook, please don't forget to like the page. Do stick and stay and listen to why the Paris Horizon Tattoo Series is here and it has come to stay. All right, so I would sign off now and I hope to see our guests. If you want to come on the show, simply contact me either through my Facebook or my Instagram uh, handles and I would reach out to you for you to come in here and share your own inspiring stories. This is where we draw the curtain on today's session. Thank you so much, Constance. And I look forward to being part of your mentoring and leadership workshops. I'm grateful, Jifa, and I'm honored for having me on the show. Thank you. Do you have an inspirational, educational, or motivational story to share with us too? What's stopping you? Simply send an email to perisos.horizon at gmail.com. What is the Perisos Horizon chat room about? It's all about you. The Perisos Horizon chat room series, as stated by the initiator and host, distinguished Toastmaster Patricia Jifamen Salakai, is a platform intentionally here to nurture a culture of celebrating each other's notable milestones. She believes we must not despise our humble beginnings. Instead, we must find a community of like-minded people to support each other, create effective collaborations, and celebrate our small or big success stories. This will encourage us to keep persevering towards our next horizon. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at DTM Patricia Jifamen Salakai and like our Instagram and Facebook page at Perisos Horizon. Until next time, keep scaling higher heights.